Of course, since he's 3,000 miles away, that makes it a little difficult to get some real back and forth going, so uh, I'm not going to patronize you and pretend that there, this is anything other than an artificial back and forth, but uh, still, somebody's got to ask the freaking question, so this is how it's going to have to be. Anyway. So, tell us more about uh, yourself and Red Void and the Super Fiends collaboration. Is it something that we can expect more of in the future? Uh, you know, uh, is it a standing musical group or was it just sort of a one-time thing that you threw a name on so that it would be something a little less chunky than Funky 49 and Red Void? And uh, as long as we're on the topic, what's it like working with Red Void? Well, uh, Red Void and I get together every Thursday night, either at his house or my house, he has a little white dog named Ziggy, and I have a little black cat named Bella Lugosi. Uh, our dynamic is uh, pretty cool. And our dynamic is dynamic. Like one day we just might uh, play video games the entire night, or we'll just work on beats, or programming synthesizers, or sampling shit. Uh, sometimes uh, it'll go to a point where one of us at the computer steamroll on a track, and another time, uh, you know, Red Void might be fucking rolling on the floor, all smoked out, falling asleep. Because of some killer mud that he got whacked into. Oh, and, shit. And, and another time, you know, um, I, I sat back and just like surfpowder.com while Red Void fucking just tore up this track, just assembling bits and pieces because he already had it in his head. So sometimes it's very musical and collaborative and we're both like touching a synthesizer. Or in other times, like one person's off in La La Land in space and the other person's working on the track all by themselves. So dynamic is very dynamic. So, uh, is there anybody that you'd like to work with if you uh, had the chance that you just haven't yet? Well, uh, Re Belly, Betty Rebel and I are supposed to do a track. Uh, the Genesis was uh, in a girlfriend snooping on my cell phone and uh, accused me of some foul shit. But uh, there's some people that I would like to work with. Uh, a joint with YT Cracker would be pretty cool because I think we're very, very, very similar in some ways, but very diametrically opposed in other ways. Uh, doing something with uh, Router Live would be cool. Uh, we're back to the future yes. with the sex robots would be pretty cool. Don't fuck with um, me. <laughs> I, need to, I need to do something with uh, Mr. High C. That would be pretty cool. Nerdcore artists seem to run the gamut from hip hop heads who just happen to have something of a nerdy streak, kind of a la Deltron 3030, all the way to uh, hardcore nerds whose real experience with hip hop is just what's thrown into video games, movies the radio, uh, everything really, I mean, it's pretty pervasive. So, <clears throat> that having been said, where exactly do you think you fall on that spectrum between nerdcore and hip-hop, if we can pretend for a moment that the two are extremes? Uh, and what do you think of the, uh, how do you think the scene as a whole is faring right now? I come from more of being very, very nerdy to now being more true neutral. Uh, I run 49% hip hop, 49% nerdy, and 5% perspiration. Uh, <laughs> in the uh, 80s, I played like Atari and Dungeons and Dragons and went over to my friend's house and watched him play King's Quest on his Tandy. Uh, all the while, back at home, I had this really huge boombox uh, tuned into Power 99 out of Philadelphia. Uh, the state of Nerdcore as a whole, well, uh, with Nerdcore, and it's becoming slightly more popular. Uh, I think the artists have opportunity to have fun expressing themselves while entertaining people. Uh, the more exposure means greater quantity of people can be entertained and that's very, very cool. Um, it's very important, I think, to express yourself, to have fun, and serve others. Uh, you and Red Void performed on uh, Rhyme Torrance Volume 1, a track called RPG, Rhymes of Fatness and Greatness. Uh, what, what RPGs are you into? Uh, do you create your own settings? Do you play in established settings? Do you have any favorite characters that you like to play? Well, uh, Super Fiends is a, 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 a moniker we've only recently thrown on some of our works. Uh, we've uh, actually been producing music together for about 10 years. Um, one of the first times I went over to Red Void's house, he uh, invited me out to his studio night one night. He's working on a remix for DJ Magic Mike. And the very first question that he asked me was, uh, does this kick need to be more boomy or more punchy? And I thought it was like a trick question because DJ Magic Mike, of course, is going to be boomy. Uh, my favorite character to play is myself. Uh, I go to the gym to increase my strength. I try to talk to girlies to increase my charisma. And obviously, since I'm the klutziest rapper on the face of the planet, I have very low dexterity. 
uh, before Northwest Nerdcore was even a gleam in MC Tanuki's eye, uh, pretty much at the same time, or if not immediately after the uh, Nerdcore Night at PAX last year, you were already setting up shows in Florida with the likes of EPP, uh, Condor Crew, um, Magitech, as well as others that uh, are eluding me at the moment. Uh, how do you think that in that year the uh, Florida scene has changed, if at all? And uh, what do you think about all these different bands that you've gotten the chance to work with? What's EPP like to work with? I'm fucking biased. EPP is awesome! Alright, the rest of the questions I'm going to answer like with EPP. Um, Hamstar has a very uh, similar thinking on the politics side, and Dimension is very hard to keep up with, uh, with uh, the sciences and whatnot. Uh, Router, she seems like a lovable nut, and uh, Audio Blender seems very lovable in a masculine way, too. Um, I hope to work with uh, Florida peeps like the Condor Crew and MCRT and sign along it more often. So I understand that you've done a track with Benjamin Bear. What was he in particular, separate from uh, EPP, uh, like to work with? Working with B-Bear is uh, very much like working with uh, Red Boy. Both of them are uh, classically trained musicians. Both of them can play multiple instruments. They're very cool people to hang out with. They do not have uh, big egos. It's just, you know, about hanging out and making music. Okay, just off topic for a second. Who's your favorite Adult Swim character? Meat Wad. I love he's lovable. Meat Wad is lovable. I'm sorry. Um. Fuck yeah. I like Shake. You. Ask. But I think I'm Prylock. Uh, who would you find to have been your main influences in music as a whole? My main influences in music are the Beatles and the Beastie Boys. Although truthfully, I am uh, inspired by anything because I keep my ears open to anything. So be it uh, techno or hip hop or opera or classical or country or some crazy experimental joints, I will listen to it all and try to maybe even reproduce it all. Can you tell me about some of the inspiration behind Hurricane Love? Hurricane Love <laughs> was totally because I woke up one morning and uh, I heard that there was this hurricane heading towards Tampa and it made me sad because I knew that like my ex-girlfriend was would be like weathering the storm with some other dude and not weathering the storm with me. So I felt like shit just wake up first thing in the morning. So inside of my head, I had for some reason like this Johnny Cash arrangement of a, of a song and a, a Johnny Cash vibe. And I started like laying down uh, lyrics in like a, in a Johnny Cash way, uh, in a way to try to turn that negativity, the bullshit, the shit that I felt inside into something more upbeat and something that I could uh, have make those feelings more palatable. That's what Hurricane Love was about. Well, I'm Gabriel, and most of what you've seen up to this point has been uh, the work of Funky Ford and Kind. So I'd like to say thanks for watching, and uh, we're presenting you here with the director's cut. Three alternate endings. Choose your favorite, and uh, we'll see you next time. This is Funky Four Nine reporting in from Florida. Stay nerdy. Omega Five Hundred G. Oh yeah, Gabriel, thank you very, very much for giving me the opportunity to be on your television show. Uh, and if you're ever on, on the East Coast, coming down to Florida, uh, bring sin. This is Funky49, thank you for tuning in to Florida Fucking Nerdcore. What? On the friends abortion damn dangerous thinking what if chances missed girls not kissed getting yourself pissed hurt like cold suit just can't change the past you know what you can change the future